Hello and welcome to the first episode of The Alchemist's Lab, a show in which we will explore RPG systems and give you a breakdown of their key features, my own opinion on the system, and a story from when I ran the game myself. This will be presented over a collection of videos that go into depth on each aspect of the system and then finally analyze this based on the three pillars of gameplay, social, combat, and exploration, to give an idea of the importance of these within the game system itself. Today's system is none other than the neo-Victorian horror RPG by the name of Unhallowed Metropolis. Designed and written by Jason Souls, also the designer of the tabletop war game War Machine, and co-written by Nicole Vega. As a pre-warning for this system and video, some themes presented within the game can be disturbing to some, given its grim Victorian horror theme and focus on corruption in a dark world. Great themes for horror, but not for everyone, which I completely understand. So with that said, strap on your gas masks and let's delve into the grim, dark, neo-Victorian game of Unhallowed Metropolis. Unhallowed Metropolis is a horror role-playing game with a neo-Victorian theme, which means all the fashion statements of the Victorian era, with plenty of gas masks, strange galvanic devices, corsets, and alchemy all thrown into one. The setting of the base game places the players in the grim, dark, and gritty neo-Victorian British Empire in its capital city of London, referred to as the Metropolis. Large, crackling electricity arcs off of massive Tesla towers. A choking smog fills the streets, and the millions of inhabitants of the Metropolis, from the dank slums to the rookeries, to even the clean and high-rising homes of the corrupt aristocracy, are subjected to horrors on an almost daily basis. Even the privileged aristocrats with their high-rising, clean homes are not safe, with things lurking in the dark shadows of their homes, just beyond their comprehension. The world's history diverted from our own after the plague, which wiped out the masses just as horribly as in our own history. But there's one macabre twist to the whole affair. The dead began to rise as animates, undead creatures that now roam the country, feeding and killing constantly. This apocalyptic event wiped out much of humanity, having even spread to the rest of the world. By the time of the base setting, over 70% of the land has been taken over by a blight that prevents crops from growing, referred to lovingly as the wastelands. There are hints to what dark fate may have occurred to the rest of the world, presented within the book itself, and many of these ideas and hints at what's going on do not bode well. Corruption is a large theme of the game, with much of the world being presented as oppressive, corrupted, and grim. Not the nicest place to live. From the classist themes presented within the social structures of a Victorian-era England-based society, to the very corruptions that are able to be put into play with player characters, there is always the feeling that no one in the world of Unhallowed is pure or beyond reproach. The game, however, has many themes due to this focus on corruption and darkness and horror that are not for the light of heart. From the harsh reality of the societies presented within the game, elements such as reanimation, prostitution, serial killers, and human meat markets where physicians can gain parts for their dark, scientific experiments. These can, of course, be removed from your own game to your own tastes when running the setting presented. The setting is not for everyone, and I would heavily suggest removing certain themes that your players may not be comfortable with. Some themes are better left as stated to be there than in the face of the players in some cases. So what are the base components needed to start playing Unhallowed Metropolis? Pick up the Unhallowed Metropolis book and a set of RPG dice. For the game, you will only need two D10s per player at the table. Print off some character sheets and a couple of quick reference sheets for combat, which can all be found in the link below in the description, and you're ready to go. I would heavily suggest getting a set of pencils and a notebook specifically for the game, as the political intrigue and the many names and bits of info presented in a normal Unhallowed Metropolis game can be crucial to the plot. This game is a majority presented as theater of the mind, 
so no maps are needed unless you want to make use of them for reference. Personally, I ran a year-long game in this system and never found myself needing any maps. With the majority of the focus being on moment-to-moment -moment play, in the quick snappy combat, or even on social encounters. In the dark game of Unhallowed Metropolis, your character's attributes are represented by the following categories. Vitality, which governs your body's health, the wounds you can take, and how hard you hit. Coordination, which measures your natural grace, agility, reaction time, and aiming. Wit. This focuses on your mental quickness and perception. Intellect, your raw intelligence and smarts that cover most academic skills in the game. Charm, the natural charms and graces of your character, used for social interactions of all types. Will, your mental fortitude and ability to hold your mind together when presented with terrifying or mind-breaking sights, entities, and situations. To make a roll with an attribute, you roll 2d10s plus the relevant attribute score. For example, Lady Elizabeth Arves, the aristocrat, wishes to make a roll to resist an ancient artifact that attempts to twist her mind. She needs to pass a will roll with a difficulty rating of 15. Lady Elizabeth's score is 4 in willpower. She rolls 2d10s, getting a 14 on the dice, plus the score of her attribute, 4, getting an 18. She resists the artifact's vile influence, for now. There are many skills to choose from in the Unhallowed Metropolis role-playing game. These skills can be placed in the following categories, however. Academic skills, which covers the topics of academia, such as medicine, alchemy, history, psychology, galvanics, forensic science, and many more available to those who are able to attain an education. Basic skills, which cover many different skills, such as acting, demolitions, gambling, etiquette, seduction, swimming, and even photography. Combat skills, which covers many types of weaponry, from close-range knife fighting to unarmed to rifles and archery. These skills grant special stunts based on your rank in the weapon type that are a rather broad set of special abilities. You can employ these to do special moves with your weapons, for example, quick drawing a gun or being able to parry and duel better with blades. Criminal skills, the dark and dirty secrets of the underhanded criminals such as lockpicking, forgery, escapology, safe-cracking, and sneaking with the shadow skill. This covers a general overview of the skills. I won't go into too much detail on every single specific skill. You'll have to look at the book for that. But I hope this gives you an idea of the four sections of skills within the game. I hope you enjoyed the first part of this in-depth dive into the Unhallowed Metropolis RPG. Next time, we'll be delving into character creation, qualities and impediments, callings, and corruption one of the core appeals of this game. I hope you enjoyed this video, and it helped you even in a small way. If you enjoyed this, make sure to hit subscribe and to comment below on any questions you have about the system. I'd love to have a conversation about this. It's one that I very much enjoy, and I've ran for many years at this point, I think over eight years, roughly. And I'll see you next time.